Good afternoon. My name is Eileen Sawyer. I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to provide an update on Swan Bio's progress towards developing an AAV-based gene therapy for adrenal myeloneuropathy. My disclosure is that I am a full-time employee of Swan Biotherapeutics. Swan Bio is a small gene therapy company based in the United States. It was founded several years ago by a neurologist who led the team who did the pioneering work to develop the concept of the AAV gene therapy for AMN, a scientist who has deep experience in gene therapy, and an advocate for ALD and AMN. Their collective passion for finding life-changing treatments for patients with neurological disorders founded Swan Bio and remains our core mission today, starting first with the lead program SBT-101 which is an AAV gene therapy and development for adrenal myeloneuropathy. So what is an AAV-based gene therapy? It is different from lentiviral gene therapy, which you may have heard about. AAVs, or adeno-associated viruses, are small, naturally occurring viruses that are not known to cause any disease in humans. An AAV gene therapy uses parts of these viruses to deliver a helpful gene to patient cells. It can be administered directly to the patient via an injection or an infusion, usually done one time. The AAV gene therapy will navigate through the body and transfect or enter into cells in the body where it delivers its content, which is called the gene cassette. This gene cassette stays within the cell for a long period of time and is used repeatedly by the cell to produce a helpful molecule. The use of AAVs to create medicines has been studied for over 20 years and across multiple types of diseases and target tissues. Although many of these individual indications are small or rare, overall there have been more than 3,000 patients who have received an AAV-based gene therapy. As a field, we have learned a lot from these studies. Recently, these efforts have started to pay off with several AAV-based gene therapies achieving regulatory approval for marketing and entering into clinical practice. One of these is for spinal muscular atrophy, a neurological disorder in children that affects the spine. AAV-based gene therapies are well-suited for targeting spinal cord disorders like adrenal myeloneuropathy. They're capable of entering the cells in the spinal cord, which are impacted in AMN, and they can be infused directly into the cerebral spinal fluid that surrounds the spinal cord. In addition, the gene cassettes carried by AAVs typically stay in the cell for the duration of the cell's lifetime, but don't integrate into the cell's own DNA. That means they don't get passed down when the cell divides. This works well for treating the spine because the spinal cord cells do not divide frequently, which means that we can expect the AAV gene cassettes to stay present for a long time without needing to integrate. So Swan Bio has built upon the work started by Dr. Florian Eichler and his group to create SBT-101, which is an AAV-based gene therapy being investigated for AMN. It consists of an AAV type 9 capsid or outer shell. This protects the gene cassette and delivers it to the cells. The gene cassette has a working copy of the human ABCD1 gene, which is the gene affected in individuals with AMN. The goal is to provide the cells that are missing the ABCD1 gene with a copy that will let them produce the needed protein. The gene cassette with the ABCD1 gene will stay in the cell to be used to produce the protein, well, the capsid part, this outer part, will be broken down and discarded. SBT-101 is intended to be administered intrathecally or directly into the cerebral spinal fluid for the best access to the spinal tissue. In the clinical trial, this will be done in the hospital. The infusion will take place over the course of several hours. During the infusion, patients will be able to get up and walk around periodically and do not have to stay lying down the whole time.
I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide. Uh, this is just an overview of the preclinical work that was done with SPT 101 before moving to study it in humans. The first panel here on the left is an experiment done to demonstrate that SBT-101 can enter human neurons and produce functional protein, as seen by lowering a very long chain fatty acids in the cells. The middle panel sh shows that the same effect can be seen in the spinal cord of mice when it is given to mice lacking the ABCD1 gene, and that in a mouse model of the disease, mice who received SBT-101 do not develop the functional impairment that the mice who did not receive it developed. We also looked at biodistribution and safety in monkeys, and were able to see that with the intended dose and in intrathecal delivery, there was good transduction, including of the areas of the spine believed to be important for an effect in AMN. And there were no unexpected side effects in the monkeys. We did see some temporary changes in liver markers, which is typical of many AAV-based gene therapies. In order to study a treatment in patients and show that it impacts disease, it is important to have a solid understanding of what happens over time in individuals with the disease who do not receive the treatment. In order to better understand how AMN progresses and choose endpoints to focus on in our studies, SwanBio is conducting a natural history study, which we call Signet. It is currently fully enrolled at 65 patients with sites in the US and Europe. We are evaluating a number of different and new endpoints at multiple time points over the course of two years. Patients come into the office annually and all the other assessments are done at home using telemedicine, wireless sensors, and a wearable watch. Based on how this works, we plan to use similar techniques for patients enrolled in our first gene therapy study. Swan Bio has initiated the first in humans Phase 1-2 study of SBT-101 for AMN called PROPEL. The primary objective of the study is first and foremost safety and to determine if SBT-101 and the administration procedure are well tolerated. Secondary is to look for signs of efficacy or impact on disease progression. This trial is being done with a small group of patients to start and the criteria to participate were chosen to allow us to quickly assess key safety and efficacy features to inform the next stages of development for the molecule. Patients enrolled in the study will receive a single infusion of SBT-101 into their spine at one of two doses and then be followed for a total of five years. The study will start with a low dose and then if the safety data warrant, proceed to a higher dose. The dose for the third group of participants will be determined based on the information from the prior dose groups. The study is currently open and enrolling in the U.S. Propel is currently enrolling men between the ages of 18 and 65 who have a confirmed diagnosis of AMN and are in the earlier stages of their disease progression, meaning mild to moderate myelopathy. For more information about what is involved in study participation, and what the eligibility criteria are. Individuals can contact the email address shown. Thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to your questions during the Q&A session.